Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overall Series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I hope to build a new lander for our Mars sample return mission and in order to do that I am looking for a well for the lunar module ascent and descent engines. I'm looking for a better engine than the one kilonewton thrusters of course. Uh, now we could still do the mission with the one kilonewton thrusters. I still think that's a viable option but it is a frustrating option and we were clearly short of Delta V. So I'm looking for a better option and I know I have the Lunar Module Ascent and Descent engines in here and looking at the RP0 configurations I see that they should be in something called Advanced Landing. So I'm looking for that right now. We have Landing here so I assume Advanced Landing should be ahead of it. Let's research this. Okay and now Advanced Landing. Alright and we have those engines. Okay so the engines I've been pining for all this time are here and maybe I can build a proper lander this time instead of the one that I used before. Okay, well, that's what I get for not looking at the configuration files in the first place, but of course the problem is that the tech tree here uh, we couldn't see ahead and we couldn't plan ahead. Uh, so I didn't know that that node even existed, it wasn't showing up. So okay, right, now we can build a lander. Okay, so I'm starting with the same base as we had for the Mars sample lander, so this is still the return package. But I'm curious about the fact that we have uh, the FASTA lunar module descent engine here, and it doesn't have gimbling. But we have this lunar module descent engine here, and it does. It has six degrees of gimbling. I believe it is supposed to have gimbling, so I don't know why the FASTA one doesn't. Uh, I know the Ascent engine did not have gimbling, so yeah, uh, probably not a great idea to use that for much of the trip, but but yeah, I guess, and this one's heavier. Why is it that this one is 0.135? They're both Realism Overhaul compatible, I assume they're both Realism Overhaul configurations. Um, yeah, it is a peculiarity here. There is an alternate configuration there, and um, this actually has more alternate configurations, and they don't seem to quite match up right. Not too sure what's going on here, but without question, this is the one that looks better. So, yeah, I'll unlock this one. I mean, I don't know what to make of this, but they're supposed to be the same engine surely they're supposed to have the same stats but uh, yeah okay well we'll go from here and see what I can do okay so here we go this is what I came up with and you can see I still retain some one kilonewton thruster boosters and you might wonder why and that is for numerous reasons uh, let me get the Delta V off to the side here uh, well the thing is that the lunar module descent engine doesn't really have a great sea level ISP. Now, that's ISP at Earth sea level pressure. Now, we're not going to experience that at, you know, at the surface of Mars, but we're going to experience some level of decrease in ISP, and this is going to be pretty severe. Uh, so I have to worry about that. Now I've got tuned to Duna here, and you, th this is the base. Uh, stage here, let's say the liftoff stage when we try to return home. And that's got a thrust weight ratio of 1.33 in vacuum, but 0.68 in earth sea level pressure. And the reason it doesn't have, uh, if I just had the lunar module descent engine, the gap would be this big, which is about a factor of three. And here you can see it's more of a factor of two, and that is because the one kilonewton thrusters have a much tighter range when it comes to their ISP between sea level and vacuum. So I'm taking advantage of that. They don't have great, they're basically acting as boosters. They're, they don't have great ISP otherwise because this has uh, 311 and they have 280 or so. But uh, yeah, I decided it'd be a good idea also because I wanted to shed the landing legs. You might wonder why I didn't use the lunar module descent ascent engine after the descent engine and that's because it'd be too tall and so that was the problem there I didn't want such a tall 
tall thing. Now, uh, you can see how the lander legs work, and it is quite wide. Looks sturdy. And I should point out that the lander legs are technically not RP0, non RP0, part not supported by RP0. Um, but I don't know what to do about that because the only struts that are RP0 compatible are these micro landing struts, and as you might suspect, they're not good enough. I know I could tweet scale them up, but you know, I don't feel safe about that. I guess, well, okay, even the small inflatable airbags are non RP0, so even if we try to do it that ways, which would be a dicey way to do it, uh, that doesn't work either. So, actually, we have no way of landing things unless we use a non RP0 part. So, I've gone with these regardless. Now, other points to note, I added uh, early controllable core here, and that is because for some reason I was over the mass limit. So, uh, just a little hair, but you know how that is. So, I added that in just in case. Uh, technically, this portion is over the mass limit for, so if I take this off, uh, this portion has to go away too before it's okay. So, when it decouples from the return vehicle, which we already have in orbit around Mars, uh, it will actually decouple from here. Okay, so that is another point. So GenoCore is controlling the lander. We've got solar panels this time, and that is because I was a little bit worried about the electric charge situation, uh, especially because we don't really have the return vehicle to use this time. Remember, the return vehicle did a lot of stuff around Mars for the previous lander, and this is not going to have that for it. It's going to have to rely on the solar panelry of this third stage, and also this third stage's engines if it needs to make a correction of some kind. So that's troublesome. But on the bright side, the third stage uh, does not have to push the return vehicle. So I've reduced its duration a bit from 15 minutes to 13 minutes. And I've gi given it antennae just to be safe, even though this uh, Saturn instrumentation unit is good enough to uh, control it. It's got local control and all. But uh, just to be safe, I've got the antennae on. And yeah, it's got the solar panels and four engines. So it'll have to... Now the fuel will boil off. We'll, we have cryogenic fuel here. The fuel will boil off. And so we'll lose Delta V on the way to Mars, but I hope to retain enough Delta V so that I can make a correction if necessary. That might not work out. On the bright side, the lander itself has much more Delta V than the previous version. It's about 4,700. So that's positive. Now, I am worried about the fact that my thrust weight ratio, even in vacuum, is not that high. Now, part of that is going to be burned off on landing. So, and the fact that we don't have a very high thrust weight ratio on that part is also a little bit troublesome because we know that was what killed us last time. The fact that we can slow down enough. I'm expecting to burn most of this 475 on touch on landing. Now that's really landing fuel right there. We'll probably shed that portion on ascent and these two will be on ascent and so we'll start off with a 1.67 vacuum ISP there. Uh, not great if uh, we had a full sea level pressure but we don't. I think that just about says it all. The rest is the normal Shakti N that we used for the previous mission. So yeah, I'm going to save this. We have time warped to the appropriate time, and I am going to attempt to launch it. Alright, so it is daylight, and we are lined up. Everything is a go. And uh, yeah, I think we are in a good situation. It's sort of nice to have clouds again in Realism Overhaul. I've been doing, of course, a lot of Realism Overhaul in 1.0.4, and I don't have clouds there because um, there's some conflict between uh, environmental visual enhancements and the way real, a real solar system is in Copernicus now. But anyway, that's uh, talk for another time. Let's get going.
Yeah, of course, I've been a little bit slow in posting this episode, and that's because of the other Realism Overhaul series. And that will be occupying more of my time, because, first of all, it's much easier to do things in there, because the rocket's smaller. And, of course, I'm trying to figure new things out, like spin stabilization, which I never did in this series, of course. And so, as I try and figure things out, that's a little bit... Uh, I mean, I'm getting more information quicker through that. This, it takes a much longer time for me to get any sort of new data. Most of our new data is going to be around other planets now, like Mars. But I'll still continue with this series until that series catches up with this one. In other words, that series is ready to do interplanetary missions. Uh, I still didn't add uh, separatrons to the boosters. Should have done that. They're gonna be uh, separating a little bit tightly again. Okay, decoupler overheating, but the boosters are about to run out. Okay, off they go. <laughs> Way tight there, but still good. Again, I have to keep the pitch high because of the decoupler overheating thing. I think I'm gonna drop off the fairings right now. Oh no, they might climb. No, okay, let me wait. I've had too many fairings colliding with main stage issues before to try that out. Okay, set, mm, set, ignition, okay, ignition is good, all right, and uh, now fairings, okay, stay away, stay away, stay away, all right, So what were these for? Can I see them? Yeah, they're they're here. So one thing I didn't mention in the VAB about the lander is, of course, that it's got uh, asparagus staging. So the fuel from the the pods, the one kilonewton thrusters with the lander legs, feeds into these guys, which then feeds into the center. The center uses aerosene and the one kilonewton thrusters also use aerosene in this configuration. So no more uh, pure monomethyl hydrazine, it's uh, aerosene which is a mix of different uh, forms of hydrazine. Now we've got an extra trick uh, when it comes to the Mars side of things because with the original mission I was able to keep in communication because we separated from the return vehicle uh, and then immediately landed. So the return vehicle was passing overhead at the same time we were landing and so it facilitated communications. Now in this case we might have a little bit of a trick making that happen. I'll have to try and make sure to land when the return vehicle is passing overhead but it's not such a neat situation this time. Um, so yeah, Got a, that's a worry on my mind right now that I have to make sure to match orbits. I mean, we don't have to match inclination because we'll just uh, launch into the correct inclination for a return vehicle after we uh, have landed. As long as we land within the latitudes covered by the return vehicle, we can just time it and then launch into the return vehicle's orbit. But, uh, but we still have to be close enough to return vehicle to have communication. That's that's the thing. I think I probably flattened out with the main stage a little bit too quickly. Should have tried to launch into a higher trajectory. We didn't have enough time to apoapsis for this one. 
You know, I tilt up a bit for safety's sake. Yeah, it's been a while since the last time I launched this. Uh, probably almost a month. Okay, we seem to be on the right track here now. And we've got less than a minute left on the J2 stage. And we are at a pitch of 10. 40 seconds to Apwaps and Rising. We'll need the time to burn some of the third stage here. So, I don't know exactly how much time enough to burn about 700-800 meters per second. Actually I think at this point we can probably flatten out. We'll just burn what we need to on the other side of Apoapsis. Okay that's that. Set. And ignition. Alright. Ignition is good. Well, this might take longer than I expected, so I've tilted up uh, two degrees. I'm not sure whether that'll be enough. We're already going down past Apoapsis. Got about 400 meters per second, 500 meters per second left to burn. Okay, well, we've got the camera change. I'm just waiting for the periapsis to be nice. I don't want the apoapsis to go too far away. So I'm gonna cut it at there. Alright, not very circular at all, but I'll take it. Let me plot for Mars. Okay, well. This is not the most opportune time to send a trip to Mars. Uh, I use Transfer Window Planner to do this, and uh, so yeah, no insertion burn as usual, and I plotted it. And you see, I got this uh, possibility right here, and I knew it's gonna be about 4,117 here. Um, and if you had to slow down around Mars manually instead of air braking, it'd be 6,777 here. But uh, yeah. So, I mean, normally you can get something as low as 3,600 bits because, uh, you know, Mars' orbit is a little bit, what you got, uh, eccentric, and we're just at the worst end of that. Uh, so, that's a problem because, I mean, we have the Delta V, it's just that it's not nice to use all of it right up front. And if we try to just touch Mars' orbit like uh, Holman Transfer and then correct at the descending node here let's say uh, just doing this takes 4060 and then the correction here the correction here would take about a thousand around there now that would be too much so then the option is of course intercepting at the descending node and I think that's what transfer window planner had in mind actually but Checking out how much that would cost. So let's, uh, oops, let's move this over. It takes about 4,500. And there it is. Uh, Duna Encounter slash Mars Encounter. Not the best encounter. Yeah, and then of course, once we get there, we're going to face extra difficulty slowing down. Okay, well, let me tweak this a little bit more and then I'll get back to you. Okay, so here's a pass that approaches Duna slash Mars at a periapsis of 168 kilometers. And importantly, it's going in the same direction as the return stage, which is important, of course, for communication purposes. Uh, so that the return stage is in contact with it for a maximal amount of time during landing. I'm still not aiming for that location because that would be a tough rendezvous with the return stage. This looks like it'll have plenty of opportunity to land in a spot that the return stage will cover. Uh, now it's still 4532.2 but if we do it right 
uh, we will be in a good position on the Mars side. So I guess this is what we'll go for. Okay, all the lander's tanks are locked, I think. But I, I oh, uh, the extra four Delta V is probably because of the little Ullage rockets there. Okay. Okay, getting set up here, we will take this in two burns as usual. So that's the plan. It is very dark here. So let's have more ambient light. But not too much. And I think I want to burn for about six minutes on the first burn and then we'll finish it off on a second burn. So, a little bit of time warping here. Okay. Let uh, KGR settle things down and then I'm gonna have the Ullage rockets and ignition. Okay, I'm gonna cut it at an orbital period of six hours and then, you know the drill, replot and then start over again. Okay, so there we are and I'm looking for a plot of about 2,455 meters per second. Okie dokie. Okay, I've coaxed it down to 108 kilometer periapsis with 2425 meters per second. Uh, but the inclination is a little bit worrisome. I mean, of course, we do cross the orbit of the return stage twice, so that's okay. But that's pretty wide. And that I'm worried about the inclination difference because of communications and the horizon problem. So, yeah. But I'll take this for now. We don't have too much Delta V to correct any mistakes. When I consider that uh, probably half of the Delta V remaining is going to boil off by the time we get to Mars, what we're talking about is about 150 meters per second left over. That's not much. And then we'll, we'll be on the lander stage for the rest of it. So this is not looking great, uh, and mainly it's because of the timing of it. Uh, we'd have much more Delta V left over if uh, we had transferred at a different time. But yeah, we'll go with this for now and see how it works. I mean, more practice is good. Uh, this is complicated stuff, and this is all leading up to a future crewed Mars mission. And of course, we have to do the moon mission first, too. Uh, we haven't quite been successful with that. but. All this is more data coming in, more information that I can use for planning that future mission. So, yeah, the more we do this, the more refined it'll get. Okay, Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. We look, we look to be pointed roughly in the right direction. Once I ignite the engines, the gimbling will get us there. Let me just make sure Smart ASS knows that I want to have it point at the right direction. We're not using the RCS yet. We'll reserve as much of that as possible for the maneuvers around Mars. Okay, Ullage and Ignition. Okay, we're working on the last bit of it. Let's see what's really going on here. Well, we don't have our encounter yet. Okay, I'll take that. Let's see. That's how it looks. Turn on RCS. Well, there's gonna be a long RCS burn, so I'll get back to you once I've got this finished. Ah, looks like it will take a little bit more than was plotted. 
Really should have left the RL10s burning for a little bit longer. So after this, after we get our trajectory to Mars, I'm not going to send it over in this episode. I'm going to keep it in Earth's sphere of influence for now until the next episode. And that's because I'm pondering whether I should launch a second vehicle, an alternate. Now, knowing now how much Delta V it takes to transfer, maybe I should add a, a service module of some kind using the surf, service module propulsion system from Apollo, you know, the same one that we have on the return vehicle. Having an additional stage like that might help things out a little bit more for maneuvers around Mars. So maybe... I mean, yeah, of course, it'll cost more. Uh, our budget is not infinite by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, you know what? Uh, just turning around is... Okay, um... I'm gonna leave it here for now. 14,000 kilometers. I'm gonna adjust it at the beginning of the next episode. And that is because... I want to think about what I'm going to be doing a little bit more more carefully. I might want to use another ignition of the RL10s to do this because I'm going to be running out of RCS fuel on this stage and we need to do a lot with this stage once we get to Mars. So yeah. Yeah, I might want to plot a correction and use the RL10s to fix it. But I'll do that in the next episode. So we'll leave it here as this is on its way out but not out yet. And I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.